Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Delegates from across the globe are making their way to the border city to find out the latest in heavy oil innovation. Opening ceremonies for the 2012 heavy oil show are underway tonight and doors to the show itself open at 10 tomorrow morning. Over 200 exhibitors will fill over 360 booths at the Lloyd X grounds this year. For industry to get together and exchange ideas and show uh, what their new technologies and innovations are. Organizers are expecting over 6,000 attendees with exhibitors from all over the world, including Korea, China, South America and the United States, just to name a few. It's getting busier. It's the crunch time is on now. Uh, so everything is picking up today, and so, but it's all good. The show will run a bit differently this year. Guest speakers will headline daily lunches, and it should take you less time to get through the doors with upgrades making the admission process faster. If you want to check the two-day show out, admission is free. Simply head down to the Lloyd X grounds. The show is underway at 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow and 9 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For details, visit the Heavy Oil Show website at that address right there on your screen. Meantime, Canada's oil and gas industry is forecasting a growth of 10,000 jobs in the next three years. To help prepare for the boom, Lakeland College is constructing a new petroleum centre, what will be the biggest power engineering training facility in Alberta. Elise Cox has the story. <laughs> These shovels aren't just symbolizing the start of a new project, but a new beginning for the petroleum industry in Lloydminster. Lloydminster is the hub of oil and gas activity. We know that. We see it here on a daily basis. So for us to be able to have a training facility that can adequately finally meet the needs of that industry in Lloydminster is incredible. The new building will offer more full-time and part-time oil and gas programming. Right now we take 40 first years. Immediately we'll be able to take 80 first years and then graduate 40 into our second year programming. So we'll start with 120 uh, and then our goal is to get to 200 students. Which will make Lakeland College the largest power engineering training facility in the province of Alberta. The focal point of the new centre is a large power engineering and heavy oil lab with steam boilers. We designed the lab first, we're designing the building around the lab and uh, the majority of it is plant. There will be some simulation lecture theatres in there. The power plant will be fully functional and heat the campus as well as produce 200 kilowatts of power for the campus grid. This is live the learning. I mean, this is what they'll work with in industry. Construction is expected to begin in November and finish a year later, hopefully in time for their 100th year celebration. The budget is $17 million. Elise Cox, Newcap News. Well, if you're driving in the border city, you've probably experienced a fair share of frustration on Highway 16. Construction on the east end of the city is still bogging up traffic, but the city assures it's making progress despite delays. Road rehabilitation work from 45th to 50th Avenue is still underway and has seen some delays due to our recent weather. There's silver lining. Um, this rain has compacted that foundation much better than you could ever do it with machinery. And we shouldn't see any of that kind of uh, road degradation at the same levels that we saw before we started the construction. Now, if there aren't any more weather delays, construction on the south side of Highway 44 will be finished up by September 22nd. Well, after over 30 years in the city, a longtime councillor is calling it quits. And with now 11 candidates chomping at the bit for a seat, this could mean even more fresh faces after the municipal election. Elise Cox has more. A familiar face for over 32 years on city council has announced he won't run again in the next election. Current councillor Herb Flieger says it's been a hard decision. I'm going to miss it, but uh, it's time to do something else. And to put his immense influence on our city into perspective, the biggest issue when he first started was... The biggest problem we had was that we didn't have a decent source of water, didn't have any water, and the water we had was brown at best. Councillor Alan Park also added his name to the list of councillors not running for re-election. Park only served one three-year term, but is happy with his contributions. I felt I've accomplished uh, a lot of what I wanted to accomplish, and um, that's, that's where I 
probably should leave it. But just because these two aren't seeking re-election doesn't mean they won't stay involved in the community. Flieger has been appointed as a board member on the Lloydminster and District Health Advisory Council and Park will continue being a part of the community. Two good guys who participated fully in the process for three years. Uh, both will be missed for very different reasons. And their announcement leaves room for at least three fresh faces on City Council. You, you want to regenerate always. You want to bring new ideas and perspectives to discussion. The last day for those looking to throw their names into the running for City Council is September 19th. Elise Cox, Newcap News. It's a search effort that spans over 30 years. Three people are believed to have gone missing in the North Saskatchewan River since 1981. And now police are scouring the water again, searching for answers. Over the next few days, the RCMP will be searching the river from North Battleford to Nipawin. The latest person to vanish is Bernice Carnahan from Rabbit Lake. Her vehicle was found in mid-August near the river, but there's still no sign of the missing 83-year-old. As the RCMP flies over the river, they'll be looking for Carnahan and the others believed to be in the river. The public is being asked to keep an eye out for anything suspicious floating in the water.